Hi there Jeep owners. Today in your 2017 Jeep Cherokee, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Direct Connect base plate. On each side you're going to have an attachment point for your tow bar to click into as well as a place for your safety cables to attach. It's going to be hidden behind the bumper other than these components that pass through. There is going to be some trimming required to get this to pass through. Now if your vehicle has tow hooks then you may not need to do any trimming, it may just fit right into place. Sometimes you do have to do a little bit of modification around the edges just to make it, but you won't be able to see any of the modifications that you'll make. Now most base plates do provide you with a connection point for your electrical connector, your breakaway switch and things like that. This is not included on this base plate so you'll have to provide your own connection uh, brackets for those. We use short and long brackets to make our own bracketry to get everything installed. And we use the bracket that came with our six pole as well to help get some of the components mounted up. We currently have our base plate in the normal drive mode if you're running around town, but when you're ready to hook up to your motorhome, we'll put the direct connect arms in place. These simply just slide in and then twist until they lock in. We'll do the same thing on the other side to get our attachment. And now we've got a place to hook up to any Roadmaster tow bar. That's right, any tow bar from Roadmaster will slide in here and connect using the included pins with the tow bar. If you have a different manufacturer's tow bar, we have brackets available here at each trailer so you can adapt that over and make it accommodate and work with your base plate. We can then take our tow bar, we're going to extend our arm out, line up the holes, and then we'll take the pins. We're going to slide it from the outside in and then take our small pin here and secure the large pin through the hole on the other side. We'll do the same thing on the other side here to get our tow bar fully attached. And once you've got your tow bar attached, you'll just want to finish connecting up the rest of your components here, which typically includes your safety cables, diode wiring, and braking system. And now with everything fully attached, we're ready to place our vehicle into flat tow mode and hit the road. We'll begin our installation at the front of the vehicle. With the hood open, we're going to remove the panel here across the front, and we're going to remove a total of 12 push pins from it. To remove these push pins, we'll take a screwdriver with a flat blade or a trim panel remover tool, and we're going to put it into the slot opening that can be found around the edge. You can see it here. We'll slide our blade in and then give it a little twist. That'll pop out the center head, and then we can use the bladed end behind the rest of the pin to remove the entire thing. Set it aside where it won't get damaged. Now that we've got that cover removed from the top, it's going to reveal some bolts underneath of it. We're going to remove the ones located here on the back side. Your instructions tell you to remove ones on the front here on the plastic part, but we don't want to remove those. We actually want to remove this one located here with the one right next to it, and then just to the inside of the vehicle where you've got this metal piece here, go straight down and we're going to remove that one there as well. Once we get the three removed on this side, we're going to remove the same three over on the other side. Now on each side, we're going to remove three bolts in our fender liner. You can tell here that I've taken the wheel and I've turned it towards the passenger side to give myself some extra access. We're going to use an 8 millimeter socket to remove these. Now that we've got those removed, we can peel back on our fender liner, and we're now going to remove our trim pieces right here. We can more easily access the clips with the fender liner out of the way, so we can just turn those and twist those as necessary to get those released. And we want to release it to a point to where we're past the seam here because we're going to be removing the fascia so we can't have this trim piece attached to it anymore. So just pull those up until you get it removed to at least that point. 
And we are all the way released. If we look at all of our pins here, we're not touching any of the clips there. So this is a good point to stop. What, what I like to do is I'll grab a rag now and I'm gonna stuff it up behind here and that's just gonna help hold this away so we've got plenty of room while we're working. There's also a bolt located here at the top, just right up in here. And we'll need to remove that as well with a 10 millimeter socket. You may need a swivel on it in order to get on it. And we'll remove the one from the other side in the same location as well. Now that we've got this side released, we're going to perform the same procedures over on the other side. You'll probably have to turn your wheel the other way to do so. We're now underneath the vehicle and we're going to remove four bolts from across the front here at the bottom in the center with a 10 millimeter socket. We're now just in front of the tire and we need to remove the rivets from the bottom here. You're gonna have one on each side right where the little mud flap is here. We're gonna use a quarter inch drill bit to drill these out. And then you just pull it out of there like that and we're gonna remove the one on the other side. You'll get new rivets included with your kit so you'll be able to replace these. There's another two over on the other side of the vehicle as well that we're gonna to need to remove. We're now back on the driver's side and we're gonna peel back our fender liner. You can see it's really loose now because it's not attached at the bottom. And this connector in here, this large one, we need to disconnect this. So we're gonna press it on the release tab and pull it off. You can also see here that the end of the connector is attached to the plastic here. We'll need to pull that off of there. And if you're having a difficult time just pulling it off, you can also use a trim panel tool. But we need that to be free because that's otherwise it's going to hang us up when we go to take our fascia off. Now on each side, we're going to need to release our fascia here at the seam. So we're going to kind of pull outward and slightly forward to get that removed. Once we get it removed there, we need to just work our way down the light, removing it all the way. So we're just going to kind of keep working our, working our way here towards the center. And really, if we get just to this point here, this is a pretty good point to, uh, to stop and go release the other side. That way you still got a little bit of attachment here at the middle, so you can get each side released to this point, and then you can do this all by yourself by coming here to the middle to finish releasing the rest. Once you've got it removed to this point on each side, you can lift up on the bottom. That's just gonna release it off of there, and then you can set this aside where it won't get damaged. We can now remove the support braces located underneath the bumper beam. There are three large bolts and one small bolt that hold it on. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket for the small bolt. And then for the larger bolts, we're gonna switch over to a 15 millimeter. And then we can pull that off and set this aside. Make sure you save this hardware. We are gonna reuse some of it when we put our base plate on. We'll remove the other side the same way. We'll now need to remove the stud on each side and take the tab down here and hammer that back in place. You can cut the stud off, but in a lot of cases, I find it's easier and you're gonna get a more flush uh, removal of the stud. If you just put a pair of channel locks or vice grips on there and then just bend the stud up and down and it's gonna take it off of there for you really easy. We're gonna do that over on the other side as well and then we'll hammer this up. We can now take our braces and put them into place. Our holes are gonna line up with the factory holes where we just removed our bolts. And this plate here is gonna angle up like this. So they are side specific, so you wanna make sure it's looking like this when you get it on there. Next, we're gonna prepare our hardware. Take the original bolts that you removed and we're gonna put a little bit of red Loctite on each one of them. We'll then take our hardware, we're gonna slide it through the base plate and then loosely thread it right back into those factory weld nuts. We're then gonna snug it down. I like to try to make sure that it's nice and even by lining it up with the bottom and the sides and then just run it in there. Now 
We'll then do the same thing on the other side, making sure that we get it nice and even to match. We can now go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. If you need a torque wrench, you can get one here at eTrailer made by Performance Tools. We've got both half inch and 3 8 drive available. For this job here, you really only need the 3 8 drive. But if you're wanting to torque down the wheels on your vehicle or motorhome, you might want to consider picking up that half inch. Next, the instructions tell you to cut this flap off right here because it's going to be in our way from some brackets. However, there's really no need to cut it. This bracket's so flimsy and there's a seam right here. You can actually just take this and just bend it off back like that. We're going to do the same thing on the other side and bend that back out of our way. Next, we need to drill out our holes for the upper brackets where they attach to the bumper beam. And you can use the measurement in your instructions, which is two and five eighths measuring up from this hole and then marking it. But these are the brackets that we're going to be installing here. So I find it easier to just set the bracket on top of our brace and then use the bracket as a template. And we're just going to mark out this hole here because this is where we need to drill for our hardware. While we're here, we can go ahead and mark out the other side over here. This bracket here is going to be side specific. The angle is going to go towards the outside of the vehicle. The flat side is going to be on the outside of the vehicle side. And this is going to line up with the hole over here. So we're just going to line it up with that hole. And once we've got it lined up with the hole, we'll then just mark out that area there. So we know where this bolt will go. We'll then make the same marks on the other side of the vehicle with the brackets over there, and then we can drill them out. We can now take a half inch drill bit and we're going to drill out all the holes that we had marked. And we need to make sure we go all the way through the bumper beam. There's a channel here on the inside. So once we pass through this first one, we're going to then drill through the second one so we can pass our bolt straight on through. Now that we've got that drilled out, grab one of your long bolts and just verify that it passes through. If it lines up with your other hole, then you can go ahead and move on and repeat that for the remaining holes. So now that we've got everything drilled out, we can start to install the bushings on here, the brackets. We're going to put some Loctite on all of our hardware beforehand as well, just like we did before. We can now take our brackets and line those up. We're going to take the bolt, go through our bracket. We're then going to take one of the Mylar bushings. We're going to put that into place. This can then slide through the frame. And on the other side, we're going to place a flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. And we just want this to be loose for now. Since our bumper beam is made of a different metal than our plate here, corrosion can occur due to the dissimilar metal. So putting that on there is very important or else you are going to corrode your vehicle over time. So now we got the top one installed. I went ahead and put a little Loctite on the shorter bolts that come in your kit. This is going to drop down through our bracket. On bottom, we're going to place a lock washer followed by a nut. We're going to go ahead and leave this loose for now because we want to get the other one installed on the other side the same way. And we also want to get our other bracket installed here. It's pretty much going to be similar to the ones that we've got that we just installed. The only real difference between these two is that the bracket goes on the inside. So we're going to take our bolt, we're going to put a washer on it this time. And this is going to slide through and through our bracket as well. After sliding it through the bumper beam, we're going to take the Mylar bushing and put it in place and then slide our bracket on. We can then follow that up with a lock washer and a nut. And this bottom one secures just like the bracket on the other side. We'll drop our bolt down from the top and then put a lock washer in and out on the bottom. We can then go back and tighten down our hardware using a 19 millimeter socket and wrench. And then we can go back and torque all of our hardware to the specification outlined in our instructions.
So now that we've got all of our base plates completely tightened and torqued down, at this point we would reinstall the fascia and we would have to trim the fascia out around our components here for it to go back on. But I recommend that you stop at this point because with a flat toe setup, you've got a lot more components you're gonna need than just your base plate. So while you've got your fascia off, this is the perfect opportunity to get the rest of those components installed, such as your braking system and your diode wiring, maybe a charge line kit, because it's a lot easier to rattle those wiring right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all those components installed. And once I get all those installed, we're then gonna come back and we're gonna trim out that fascia and get it back on because we're gonna have even more components that we're gonna to need to trim out for. So that's why I do recommend waiting until you've got all those on because you may have to trim even more than what just your base plate requires. So we've gone ahead and completed installing the rest of our flat toe components, which includes our braking system, diode wiring, charge line kit. So we've got all that done. We're now ready to cut our fascia out and reinstall it in reverse order of how we removed it. Your instructions are gonna provide information on how to cut out for your base plate but not for any additional components you added. So you're just gonna to have to hold your fascia up here and mark this to determine where you'll need to cut for any of those components you added, because it's gonna vary depending on how you chose to do it. So now we're here on the back side of our fascia. We'll need to remove the cover here on each side. There are two bolts that hold it on. Use a seven millimeter socket to remove those. And then there's a little tab as well, just here that holds it in place. To remove this, just use your screwdriver to push down on the release tab there and then you can just kind of pull it out. Now that, that tab's out of the way, it just slides right off of there. So again, you can find this cutout within your instructions. You can use a cutoff wheel, a pair of snips, or a small reciprocating blade, whichever works best for you. We're just gonna go through and cut these. And then we can take a file to clean up any of the rough edges here. And we'll repeat this for the same spot on the other side. And then we'll come towards the center and cut out whatever we needed to for those electronic components that we had installed. So we're just gonna use our file to clean up any of the rough edges that we've got here. And any of the paint marks that we'd made, we'll use a little bit of alcohol on a rag to clean that up as well. When reinstalling your fascia, you're gonna have a couple of Rivets them to reinstall, they come in your kit. You'll just slide the rivet in your rivet gun. You'll push it through the hole in the bottom of the fascia. Make sure that slides through the hole in the fender liner. And then just squeeze your rivet gun. You may need to do this a couple of times, squeezing it to pull it tight and get it secure. We'll just repeat that then for the other one on this side and the two over on the other side. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Direct Connect base plate on our 2017 Jeep Cherokee.